Hi there, Mr. Wilson here. Um, and we are carrying on with our previous part of the GCSE Further Maths, June 2022, uh, paper two. So we are carrying on from where we left off in the last part. So in the last part, we uh, finished on question 15. So we're gonna start this part on question 16. So we might do a, maybe four or five questions today uh, in this part. So let's go for it then. So here is a nice off of this triangle. All the angles are acute and they've nicely done the drawing for us. The area of the triangle is 120 centimeters squared. Work out the size of angle Y. Okay. Now, whenever I see a non right angle triangle and they're talking about area of the triangle and they're giving two sides, I'm thinking it's going to be something to do with um, the area formula for non right angle triangle. So, area of triangle is equal to a half AB sine C. So when you have two sides in a non right angle triangle and the angle between those two sides and the area of the triangle is a half AB sine C. So let's label up this triangle then with, with kind of what information we've got. So we've got this side here, we'll call this A. This side must be B and therefore this side is C. So this angle here is capital C. This angle here is going to be capital A and that's capital B. So what we can actually do is we can do the reverse of this formula to work out what angle C is. And then from there, because we know it's an isosceles triangle, we can work out angle Y, which is what the question is asking us to do. So that's kind of our step-by-step -step process. So let's go for it. So let's plug everything into the formula that we know. Well, we know the area of a triangle is 120 so 120 is equal to a half times a is 16 and b is 16 times sine c well we just need to sort of tidy uh, th these bits up so we get 120 is equal to 16 times sine c because a half times um oh sorry hang on no 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 sorry um a half times um 16 times 16 we'll type that in on the calculator is 128 oh thank god 128 and by dividing by 128 because we want to we want to get c so we need to get rid of the thing that's attached onto it so we need to get rid of that 128 we need to divide both sides by 128. So we get 120 over 128 is equal to sine C. And we can work what that fraction is out on his calculator. So we do 120 divided by 128. That gives us 0 0.9375 is equal to sine C. And then to get C, well, we need just need to do shift sine or inverse of sine of 0 0.9375. So we need to do inverse sine of that. And we get our angle C to be 69.6358619. Now you'll notice I've written out the whole calculated display there purely because we haven't finished the question there yet. Because the question is asking, this is angle C that we've just worked out, this angle here, we want angle uh, Y. So to do that, we need to do 180, take away this angle that we've just worked out, 69.635 and so on. So let's do that because angles in a triangle add up to 180 and that equals 110.3641348. But then because it's isosceles, that implies that angle B and angle A are the same. They are equal. So we can take this 110.3 so on and divide it by 2 because that angle splits is shared equally between A and B. So that must mean that Y is equal to 55.182017. Uh, now, in the question, it actually doesn't say what, um, what degree of accuracy to give 
it to. Now, personally, I might be tempted to give it to two significant figures purely because this is two sig fig, this is two sig fig, and this is also two sig fig. So I'm just going to give the answer as 55 degrees and sort of round it off there. But I mean, there's nothing to really say that you can't give the full calculated display for this, this answer. So this is quite a nice, interesting question. It's reverse um, kind of area of a triangle, half AB, half AB sine C, but um, with an extra little step at the end to work out that angle Y. Okay then, wow. A really good question here. Solve simultaneous equations. Do not use trial and improvement. You must show your working. Okay, then I think first step is we're going to label these equations one, two, and three. And this is just going to be really helpful in tracking which equation we're doing what to. So if you notice here, the B's are the same. There's the same number of B's in number one, equation and number one, and equation number two. So we can actually add these two together. Why are we adding them? Well, here we've got a plus 3b. We've got a negative 3b. So if we add them, remember adding a negative is the same as subtraction. They're going to cancel out and we won't be, we'll be left with no b's. So that's what I'm actually going to do. So we're going to do equation 1 plus equation 2. Okay. I'm going to sort of set them on top of each other because I think that's going to be the easiest way of adding these together. Uh, for a take away 3b plus 5c is equal to negative 5. So let's add each of these terms together. Well, a plus 4a is 5a. Plus 3b plus negative 3b is 0. They cancel out. That was the whole point of doing this in the first place. Negative 2c plus 5c is positive 3c plus 3c is equal to 4 plus negative 5. Well, that's going to be negative 1. So we've got the equation now, 5a plus 3c equals negative 1. Now, you can't actually solve that equation because there are two unknowns So in one equation, so you can't solve it. So what we need to do now is we need to find another equation with just a's and c's in that we can then um, use to solve simultaneously. So... Let's go back to our original equations. Let's use equation number one and equation number three. Now, how are we going to get them to cancel the b's? Because the b's are not the same. Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply equation number three by three. And then we're going to take them away from each other in order to cancel the b's. So equation one is the same. It's just a plus three b uh, take away two c equals four, but I have to multiply equation number three by three to get three lots of B. So I multiply everything by three. So I get six A plus three B plus nine C is equal to 27. Okay then, well now we can take these equations away from each other um, in order to cancel the b's out because we have a positive 3b and a positive 3b so the only way we're going to get rid of them is by subtracting them so let's draw a little line underneath a take away 6a is negative 5a and the b's as we know are going to cancel negative 2c take away positive 9c is take away 11c is equal to negative, well, 4 take away 27, negative 23. Okay, so now we have a new, another equation, negative 5a take away 11c is equal to negative 23. So let's call these new equations, let's call these equations 4 and 5, just so we don't lose track of them. So let's focus on our newfound knowledge then. We've got equation 4 and equation 5. How do we solve these if they're just simultaneous equations? Well, you would just eliminate either A or C and work out the other one. So let's do that then. Well, actually, it turns out the A's are the same. By coincidence, they are the same. Um, this is a positive 5A and this is a negative 5A. So what we could do is we could add these two equations together in order to cancel the A's out. So we're going to do equation 4 plus equation 5. So we have 5a plus 3c is equal to negative 1. And we have negative 5a 
minus 11c is equal to negative 23. So we're going to add these two together because we need to cancel the a's. So if we add these equations together, the positive 3c plus negative 11c is going to be negative 8c. And then negative 1 plus negative 23 is going to be negative 24. Okay, then. Well, now we've got this equation, negative 8c is equal to negative 24. If we divide both sides by eight, uh, negative 8, what we are going to get is that c is equal to 3 because the negatives are basically going to cancel each other out because dividing, by, uh, dividing a negative number by a negative number leaves a positive answer. So you get c is equal to 3. Okay, then. Now that we know this, we can start sort of drip feeding uh c is equal to 3 into a previous equation in order to work out the other parts. So let's look at equation 4 again. Well, we know that 5a plus 3c is equal to negative 1. Well, we now know that c is 3. So let's substitute 3 in replacement of that c. So we've got 5a plus 3 times 3 is equal to negative 1. 5a plus 9 is equal to negative 1. So 5a is equal to negative 10 because we need to take 9 from both sides. And by dividing both sides by 5, you get a is negative 2. Okay, then. So we've got two bits of information. We just need the last one. In order to get b, we just need to turn to one of our original equations. Substitute a and c in to work out b. So let's look at equation, oh, I don't know, the first one. Why not? So the first equation, a plus 3b minus 2c is equal to 4. Let's substitute a and c in there. So a is negative 2, so negative 2 plus 3b. Take away 2 times 3, because remember c is 3, so I'll just put that in there. It's equal to 4. Negative 2 plus 3b. And you'll notice I'm doing a lot of kind of lines of working out here. I'm really taking it step by step just purely because of that sort of phrase up there saying you must show your working. Now, I know, obviously, you don't have to show every single tiny step, but I think it's worth doing anyway. You know, you're less likely to make errors and uh, it's easier for the examiner to see where these answers are coming from. Um, anyway, back to this question. So negative two times three is negative six equal to 4. So let's just tidy a few of these bits. So well, let's add 6 to both sides to get rid of that minus 6 and add 2 to both sides to get rid of that minus 2. Well, you get 3b is equal to adding 6 to this gets 10 and adding another 2 gets 12. So therefore, dividing by 3b must be 4. And I just need to write my answer on the answer line. So a is negative 2, c is 3. And B is 4. Obviously, remember, make sure you get them the right way around. That would be a, a terrible mistake to make right at the very end. Now, how could you check your answer even further? Well, you could actually go back. Because I used equation 1 to work out the final answer, you could substitute your uh, A, B, and C into 2 and 3 just to double-check they equal the numbers that they said that they should equal. But um, quite a bit working out. But really, at the end of the day, it's just simultaneous equations, but more of it. So if you can do simultaneous equations and eliminate and things like that, then this question is not overly difficult. There's just a lot going on. You just have to make sure you're sitting at your work uh, neat so that um, you're not confused by where these sort of numbers are coming from. Okay, then question 18. Wow, a very, um, a very interesting question, this one. So here we've got a cuboid. A, B is 40. Uh, B, C is 9. And C, G is 20. P P is a point on HG such that HP to PG is 37. And AP is 25. Work out the size of the angle APC. Okay, then. Well, first of all, I want to label AP because for some reason they haven't actually done it on the diagram yet. They've labeled all, all the other sides, but not AP. So I'm going to put 25 centimeters there on AP because obviously that's going to be quite useful for the working out. Now, in order to work out this angle, what would be really nice would be if I could work out this side length here and this side length here. Because if I could work out and I had all three side lengths, I could re use reverse cosine rule to find that angle. That would be ideal. So 
you can see when I think about this question, I'm, I'm starting from kind of what will be my final step and work backwards. And by working backwards, I can kind of think, OK, what do I need to do before that, before that? And eventually I'll get up to the point where I know where to start, because I think with problems like these, a lot of students struggle where to start. So start thinking about where you want to, what's going to be the final step. Well, the final step is reverse cosine. In order to do that, I need this side and this side. OK, how do I get those sides? Well, you can see down here, actually. Let me use a different colour. You can see down here that actually what we've got, if I want this side here, well, I could use this side and this side because it's actually a right angle triangle and I can use Pythagoras' theorem. So that would be that side done. And then also I could work out this side using the same idea of this side and this side. Now, I don't know what this side is, so I'm going to have to work that one out. So as you can see, I'm kind of working backwards. I haven't even started any math yet. I'm just kind of talking. If I was doing this, I would talk myself through the problem first before I sort of start giving it a go, because I think a lot of students either don't know where to start or start off on the wrong foot, go down a massive rabbit hole, and then never really recover. So let's get cracking with this then. So let's start with AC, because that's going to be a nice one to work out first. Well, AC... Uh, Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to write out the formula. Pythagoras' theorem states um, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So 40 squared plus 9 squared is equal to a c squared. That length that we want to work out squared. So we tip tap that on this calculator. Uh, 40 squared plus 9 squared and then square root. And we actually get 41, which is quite nice. It's actually a Pythagorean triple. Um, so this, uh, by the way, this turned out to be, uh, sorry, this turned out to be uh, 1681 is equal to AC squared. And if you square root both sides, you get 41 is equal to AC. So this side here is 41 centimetres. OK, that was that was quite nice, Pythagorean triple. OK, then let's turn our attention then to, to the other one. Well, first of all, we need to work out what PG is. Now, we're told in the question that actually PG is such in the ratio between HP and PG 3, 7. Now, because this is a cuboid, opposite sides are the same. So AB is equal to HG, right? So this whole side length here is 40. It has to be because it's a cuboid. So if that whole side length is 40, well three parts are going to go on that side and seven parts are going to go on that side. So we need to basically share that side of 40 in the ratio of three to seven. So to do that, we add up the parts, so we get 10. And then we do 40 divided by 10 is four. So that means that one part is worth four centimetres. So that means that if we turn back to our ratio of three to seven, well, that means that 12 centimetres are going to go on the HP must be 12, and that must mean that PG must be uh, 28 centimetres. And you'll notice that these add to 40. They have to add to 40. So PG must be 28 centimetres, and HP must be 12 centimetres. Obviously, we don't need HP, but it's worth adding to the diagram anyway. So now that we have PG and G, uh, CG, we can work out CP. Because, again, it's Pythagoras' theorem with a right-angled triangle. So, um, sorry, let's go back up again. Uh, that must mean that 20 squared plus 28 squared is equal to um, CP squared. So we tap that on as calculator. 20 squared plus 28 squared. And we get 1,184 is equal to uh, CP squared square root both sides and you get four root 74 is equal to cp now you'll notice how i've left it as a uh, third now the reason why i've done this is because i haven't finished the question so there's no point in kind of rounding this to some decimal to so many decimal places because it's not going to actually um it's not going to 
help me because that would cause a rounding error later on. So I'm going to leave it as a third for now and say that this side is 4, the square root of 74 centimetres. Okay, then. Or you could say the square root of 1,184 if you really wanted to. Right, then. Well, now I have this side at AC and I have CP and I knew from the question AP I can use reverse cosine rule to find the angle A. P, C. So let's do that then. Well, the course, the normal cosine rule, by the way, states that um, it, well, it states that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Okay. Now, if you want to um, rearrange this to 4 cos A, as I refer to it as the reverse cosine rule, because you're working out the angle, not the side. Um, well, just a bit of rearranging will tell you that this is cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. And then you can use uh, inverse cos to work out A. So let's sub in our, our things then. First of all, we need to label the triangle. We need to make sure we get the sides the right, uh, the right way. So A... Capital A is the angle we want to work out. So therefore, little a is always the opposite side to the angle, and B and C doesn't matter which order they're in. So let's put all these in the right place then. So B, as I said, is 25, so 25 squared plus 4, the square root of 74 squared, take away 41 squared, all over... 2 times 25 times 4 root 74. And all I need to do now is just sort of tip that, uh, tip tap all that in my uh, calculator. 25 squared plus uh, 4 root 74 squared, take away 41 squared, all over 2 times 25 times 4 square root of 74. And you should get. Well, I've got this to be equal to 0 0.074398 and so on. And then you need to do shift cos, shift cos of that answer. And I got that angle there, that angle there to be, so you do shift cos of this. So shift cos of this 0 0.074, so on. And I got the angle to be 85.7 degrees. Okay, which is quite a large angle. It's close to a right angle here. I mean, I know this um, diagram isn't necessarily drawn accurately, but it's very clear from the diagram that this angle here, APC, is quite large, and the other two angles are quite acute. So really, an angle of 85.7 does make sense to me. And I, and I can sort of accept where that where that sort of comes from. So hopefully you're kind of happy with that. There's a lot of bits going on here, but I think that's the kind of theme with further maths is that if you broke the question down, realistically, all this question is, is Pythagoras' theorem twice and then cosine rule, which any, you know, any capable mathematician who's looking for a top grade should be able to do. However, when you kind of combine all these things together, you put it in a 3D shape, you add a little bit of ratio in there, you do one after the other and you, you sort of combine it all in one go and you say that the question's five marks, that's when the question becomes tricky. So I think that's really where the, this question becomes difficult. Okay, then let's have a look at the next one and see if we've got some... Oh, see, that that's the answer to the, to the last one. Okay, then let's, uh, let's have a go at this one then. Uh, expand and it's triple brackets. Now, I believe I have had a previous video on triple brackets for GCSE further maths. And whether it's GCSE further maths or normal maths or A-level, or even when I was doing my degree, I would always do the same method, which is the grid method for doing this. So because multiplication can be done in any order you want to do it in, and basically by expanding brackets, you are saying multiply everything in this bracket with everything in this bracket. You can actually do the brackets in any order you want. So here, um, I'm gonna just pick the first two, just to keep it really simple. But actually, you could do the last two, or you could even do the first and the last if you really wanted to. 
Now I'm going to set up my grid. Now some people like to use the foil method for expanding, which is perfectly fine. You can use that method. Some people sort of like to do it like as a term by term thing in their own heads. Fine, if it works for you, it works for you. But personally, I like to use the grid. And for the grid method, if you're on, if you've never seen this method before, you write one bracket along the top, one bracket down the side, like this. And this grid is a multiplication grid. So we will fill in this grid by using um, by multiplying the terms together. So for example, this box here is going to be 2x times 3x, which is 6x squared. And then 2x times a positive 4. Now it's not 2x plus 4, we're always multiplying, but the plus is there just to remind me it's a positive 4, not a negative. So 2x times positive 4 is positive 8x. Negative 3 times 3x is going to be negative 9x. And negative 3 times positive 4 is going to be a negative 12. And now we just need to collect together these terms because that term and that term both have an x in, so we can sort of collect those together. So we get 6x squared. Eight, positive 8x take away 9x is take away 1x. And I'm just going to put take away x, but you can put 1x if you want to. Take away 12. OK, then. And that's the first two brackets done. Now we just need to multiply our answer that we've just got by the third bracket we missed out the first time round. So we need to, another grid, but this time it's going to be a little bit of an extended grid here. Like this. And then we need to write our answer to the last one across the top. This is just so it can fit into our grid. And then the third bracket that we missed out was the 5x take away 2. So that needs to go down the other side. And then same as what we just did. We're just multiplying the, the terms with each other. Um, but there's just more of them. So you've just got to be a little bit careful. 5x times 6x is 30x cubed. 5x times negative x is negative 5x squared. And 5x times negative 12 is negative 60x. Then on the bottom row, negative 2 times positive 6x squared is negative 12x squared. Negative 2 times negative x is positive 2x, because when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive answer. And finally, negative 2 times negative 12 is positive 24. So now we just need to combine this and this. And then we also need to combine this and this, because they have x squared in and they have x's in. So our final answer is going to be 30x cubed. Negative 12x squared, take away another 5x squared, is negative 17x squared. Positive 2x, take away 60x, is going to be negative 58x. And then that plus 24 at the end. And that is our final answer right there. So um, not a terribly arduous question, not a sort of a long question for three marks. Just kind of making sure that we're very solid with expanding brackets here so personally i think the grid method is is almost foolproof i think it um allows you to break down the problem into smaller steps but obviously if you um if you're struggling with the grid method you don't understand it but you understand another method you use your preferred method okay then so question 20a and we've got uh, f of x use the factor theorem to show that 2x take away one is a factor of f of x. Okay, so, um, well, the factor theorem um, is an interesting one. Um, what the factor theorem states is, if you sub in when this here you want to show as a factor is equal to zero, if you should su substitute that x value into the original equation, it will come out as zero. So. If you want to show this as a factor, then you state that 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. OK, and by rearranging, you get 2x is equal to 1, so x is equal to a half. Now, if you substitute that into the original equation f of x, then you it should come out as 0. 
if it's a factor. If it doesn't come out of zero, it's not a factor. So that's a way of showing using the factor theorem if this thing in the brackets is a factor. So let's do that then. Let's substitute a half in. So f of a half is equal to two times a half cubed plus 11 times a half squared plus 12 times a half take away nine. Now, if I was doing this, I would personally, I would work out each of those individual terms because I'm trying to show as much working out as I possibly can. So it's going to be two. Um, so that first one is going to be, well, it's going to be one eighth times two. So it's going to be one quarter plus um, a half, half squared is a quarter. So it's going to be 11 quarters plus 12 times a half. Well, that is going to be six. Take away nine. One quarter plus 11 quarters is 12 quarters plus six. Take away nine. 12 quarters is three. 12 divided by four is three. So three plus six take away nine. That is zero because it's nine take away nine. That is zero. So therefore, and I'd write a sentence here, therefore, two uh, X take away one is a factor of, um, is a factor of uh, F of X. Okay, then. Happy with that so far. Now then. Um, this next part then, show that f of x equal to zero has exactly two solutions. Now, because we've already shown that 2x take away 1 is a factor of f of x, one of the solutions is x is equal to a half, because we've literally just talked about it. So one of the solutions is f of x equals a half. So what the question is actually asking is show that there is only one other solution to this. Now, what you um, could do is something known as um, polynomial division, right? Now, polynomial division is where if you know that this bracket is a factor, this 2x take away 1 is a factor, you do f of x divided by 2x take away 1. Now, if that seems absolutely mind-blowing to you and something you don't know how to do, then I would not recommend that method because polynomial division can be very tricky, um, but it does help to find the, the final answer. There is, however, I think uh, a better alternative way of doing this, um, and that is to keep using the factor theorem, right? Because think of it like this. If you had triple brackets, so you've got, well, we know one of them is 2x take away 1, and then you've got another bracket, x plus a and then another bracket x plus b okay what you are saying is well the last term when you expand these brackets the final term that negative nine is going to come from multiplying that thing by that thing by that thing so what you are implying is that this number here times this number here times this number here must be negative 9. Okay, so there are only so many combinations for what A and B could be in order to multiply to make negative 9. For example, one such arrangement could be that the brackets could be 2x take away 1, x plus 3, x plus 3. That could be one arrangement of the brackets because negative 1 times 3 times 3 is negative 9, which is what that final term is. Now, how do you show that x plus 3 is a factor? Well, we use the same idea as what we were talking about earlier with the factor theorem. If x plus 3 is a factor, factor, then when you sub in x is equal to minus 3, f of x needs to come out as 0, just as we did above. So let's do that. Let's sub in. Uh, sub in. Um, x is equal to negative 3. So if x is equal to negative 3, then 2 times negative 3 cubed plus 11 times negative 3 squared plus 12 times negative 3 minus 9. Now this should, if it is a factor, come out of 0. If it doesn't, then
isn't a factor, but we know that then to look for solution. So two times uh, negative three cubed is going to be negative 54 plus, well, three squared is nine times 11, so that's going to be plus 99. Take away 36, because 12 times negative three, take away another nine. And if you um, type that all in your calculator, you should actually get zero. So as it turns out, x is equal to three is a solution to, to the equation and uh, therefore x plus three is one of the brackets. Okay, so we know, we know for a fact that the factorization of this here, this f of x, is 2x take away 1, x plus 3, x plus something, let's call it a. And we know that it has one solution, two solutions. Well, if it has exactly two solutions, that implies that this third bracket must be the same solution as one of the previous brackets. It has to be if it if it has exactly two solutions, but we have to show that. Well, one way to show it would be to say, well, actually, if A was the same as this three, and it was two X minus one X plus three X plus three, you could actually expand these brackets and show that, um, you could expand the brackets and show that it equals F of X. And therefore, there are only two solutions. X is equal to a half. X is equal to minus three. Those are the only two answers. You could use the factor theorem even more to show that all the other possibilities for all the other numbers that multiply to make nine do not equal zero when you use the factor theorem. And therefore, none of them are factors. And as such, the only solutions are x is equal to half, x is equal to minus three. So those are kind of the ways you could go about it. Now, just very quickly then, let's expand these brackets and show that it equals that answer. So if this is truly the answer, then therefore, if we were to expand these brackets, let's do these two first, because that's going to be nice and easy. That's going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. And we're going to multiply it by 2x take 1. Now, I'm going to use my uh, grid again, like we did in the previous question. Um, so 2x take away 1, x squared plus 6x plus 9. So we get 2x cubed plus 12x plus 18, uh, sorry, 12x squared plus 18x, take away x squared, take away 6x, take away 9. And we just need to collect together the like terms. So let's collect together the um, x squared and let's collect let's collect together the x's so we get uh, 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 12x take away 9 well, let's have a little look then at our f of x well shocker it turns out that it is f of x that is f of x so i know for a fact that f of x is equal to 2x Take away one, x plus three squared. Therefore, there are only two solutions. X is equal to a half and a repeated root. X is equal to negative three. Now, what I mean by repeated root is repeated solution because we've got the same bracket twice. We're going to get x is equal to negative 3, x equal to negative 3. So realistically, there are only two solutions, a half and negative 3. OK, then what we'll do is we'll wrap it up there then, because I think the sort of next question would be a really nice one to start on. So let's sort of um, put in a uh, sort of pin in it for, for this one. Um, I hope you've uh, in, found this uh, video informative. I know there's been quite a lot of lengthy uh, long questions in that one. So hopefully 
most of it makes sense. And if you have any questions at all, then please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for, for more uh, videos. And if you've got a paper that you want me to cover, then, then also um, just let me know in the comments. Okay, thank you uh, so much for your time.